This is a special edition of Making Sunday Happen, Coronavirus and the Church, a Leader Roundtable. Let's do it. This is the definitive podcast for helping you plan, create, and execute dynamic worship experiences at your church. Useful, practical content in the areas of production, worship, communications, first impressions, and more. This is Making Sunday Happen. Well, hey guys, welcome to a very special bonus episode of Making Sunday Happen on Coronavirus and the Church. We're going to be bringing you several special edition episodes of the podcast that will appear right in your podcast feed, just like a normal podcast would. This is our first bonus episode, and we have more planned to help you navigate through this time. Obviously, the coronavirus has changed the landscape of how we do church, and it doesn't look like it's stopping uh, anytime soon. At least for the foreseeable future, uh, we're going to be online. Uh, so uh, as a church and, and as churches meet for their worship experience, we need to figure out how we're going to uh, establish community and do church online. So making Sunday happen looks a whole lot different than it did last week. So many of you guys are scrambling to know how to continue to do church. Some of you, uh, your giving is down. Some of you, your giving is up, which is very interesting. Uh, You've been forced to do church online, some of you, and you might not be able to meet in your physical location. You probably are not meeting in your physical location uh, at least this Sunday, next Sunday, for weeks and months to come. Uh, Some of you have already been live streaming and you're working on a plan for how to use what you have more effectively, whether you're going to bring a, uh, your, your core team to your physical location to uh, either live stream that service or pre-record it and then put that out. Uh, some of you are doing services in a home and just doing Facebook Live. Um, there's all kinds of different uh, ways that churches are going about this. We've heard from dozens of different churches, and honestly, there's not much um, uh, common. Uh, we've seen giving go up. We've seen giving go down. We've seen people do living room uh, type settings and ask us about how to do that. Uh, we have, uh, like I was mentioning, you know, you bring a core team to your physical location and you stream it or you pre record it. It's kind of all over the board what churches are doing. So we want to resource you with tools and resources to be able to. Uh, perform or do your uh, execute, plan, create, execute your worship uh, experience uh, most effectively no matter what setting um, that you're in and no matter what choice that you've made. So we want to help you with that. So um, some of you, again, this is your first move to streaming and you're looking for answers. So we want to provide that and also want to be a voice of calm for you. You can do this. We're going to get through this together. Uh, It might look different. Things might go back to normal. This might be the new normal. We don't know yet. Um, So uh, there are many people in the body of believers who have stepped up to help. Uh, And in an effort to let you know what uh, those ministries are that are serving you and what the leaders of those ministries are doing, I asked several leaders uh, in our space to come together for a special roundtable discussion to talk through several things. So we talked through the state of the church, where we are, and what we're seeing. Uh, we talked through the state of conferences, so what's being canceled, what's being moved, what's being postponed to a later time, um, what's not known yet. Uh, we talked through that. We also talked through resources and training available to you, um, and also some communication strategies and more. So we've gathered a powerhouse lineup of leaders in our space. You're going to hear me introduce everyone here in a minute. Um, I want you to hear the heart of these leaders especially. We are here for you. We are with you. We are for you. You're not alone. Okay? We can and will still make Sunday happen, no matter the circumstance and no matter the location. Uh, Just like we learned as children, uh, the church is not a building, right? So it's time to step up. Um, It's time to figure out new ways to make Sunday happen. And so we're going to do that. All right. So let's jump right in here. This week, our leader roundtable discussion on coronavirus and the church. Let's go. 
Well, hey guys, thank you so much for watching and listening to this special roundtable discussion on coronavirus and the church. I feel like we're very Brady Bunch here uh, with our, our group. We've, uh, we've gathered several conference leaders and influencers uh, in the worlds of communications and creativity and media. And uh, for the sake of time, I'll just kind of introduce uh, everybody that we got. And uh, we are waiting on Kenny Jang. Obviously, if you know Kenny, anything about him, you know that uh, uh, he's a wild card. So he'll jump in at any moment here. Uh, but we have uh, Luke McElroy from SALT Conference. We have Justin Dean from That CC, Katie Allred from Church Communications, Luke Miller from Worship House Media, Ben Stapley. Uh, communicator and author, speaker, and also consultant Stephen Brewster in the house. What's up, guys? Just hanging hey, out. What's up? <laughs> Going. Awesome. Uh, well, guys, as we meet today, obviously uh, information is changing all the time. Uh, we're recording this a day before it's going to air, so who knows what's going to happen here in the next 24 hours. Uh, but as of right now, uh, the White House has recommended that groups of 10 or more uh, should not gather. Um, so obviously, as, as you know, most businesses are either closing down or have reduced their services. Restaurants are going to drive through all kinds of stuff like that. So non-essential businesses are shutting down. Uh, the coronavirus has completely reshaped how uh, we do our routine and uh, especially in the church world. So that's what I wanted to kind of gather you guys and and talk through the church's response uh, with the virus and how it's kind of um, changed our entire world. And uh, we're kind of in uncharted territory here. So uh, Luke McElroy. By the way, before we start, I just, I want to ask this. The government's going to stop 10 people from gathering. I really think the rest of the world doesn't even know what the Duggars are going to do right now. Because how do they like divide their own family? Yeah. Right. How do they quarantine? Exactly. They're all married now. So. That's true. They all are like divided. I thought about that already. Okay. <laughs> Glad you have the answers, Katie. Um, sure. All right, uh, Luke McElroy, why don't you uh, why don't you get us started? Uh, and where where are we? So what are, what are we seeing in church world? Uh, where are we as a as a state of uh, of our church? Well, I think it's unprecedented in so many different ways. Um, you know, you, you know, even a month ago, two months ago, you, you had a good number of churches that were of sizable uh, congregations doing online streaming. And that was sort of status quo. I think the conversations that we're noticing in some of our communities around the SALT community is we're trying, they were trying to figure out a month ago, why do you stream? How do you stream most effectively? How do you create an engaging online experience? Um, and I think what's happened in the last week is everyone's now asking the question, we need to stream out of an essential to be ministry. Yeah, um, necessity. I think, and this is just my two cents, I think last year our whole theme as a conference was for such a time as this, following the storyline of Esther, biblically, that she was in her position, she was in her royal place uh, for this sort of day and age. And, and we asked the question, maybe there's people in this room, maybe those listening to this, you are creatives, you're technicians, uh, your video storytellers, you know, you have a gift in writing and, and social media and all that sort of stuff. Maybe you literally, and, and we sort of asked the question figuratively, but now literally you may be in your position. All those who serve in tech ministry, creative ministries, we're now the cupbearers in a whole new way to help right. usher uh, the church of Jesus Christ into society. And we aren't afraid to use technology. Uh, we're willing and able and knowledgeable, uh, you know, from a technical standpoint, we know what it takes now to get into that realm. And so I think it's exciting. I think it's unknown. I think it's scary to go, you know, what does this look like? How do we do ministry? Which obviously is part of this, but uh, there's so much uncertainty. There's so much unknown. I love, and I am just so encouraged by the number of people, everybody else on this call probably would echo this, but I am just so encouraged with the number of churches that were willing to jump in. They were quick. I mean, information was changing rapidly. Facebook didn't shut down this weekend with all the live streaming. Uh, a lot of people thought Zoom was going to shut down too. So it's cool. I, I think this is a great opportunity for the church to actually be at the forefront of how do we gather virtually. And what a great opportunity to have conversations with friends and family and, and neighbors and pe people who don't, aren't willing to go to a physical church. Now they can virtually attend with no risk. I mean, what a great opportunity uh, moving mm -hmm. forward. So. Uh, Luke, you mentioned Facebook and a lot of people, I, I agree. A lot of people thought that Facebook was going to shut down or that it was, uh, you know, going to be a, a heavy burden on, 
on uh, online. Uh, and Katie, uh, I saw you mentioned that we had the biggest day in, in online church history. Um, uh, you know, I don't have any stats to actually prove that. It just felt like it had to have been the biggest day in online church you know, history. I, we have to believe you. We have to go with it. Um, what, what do you make of that, Katie? What do you, what do you think that, um, you know, what do we make of basically every church in America moving to online? I think it's really cool that we embraced it so quickly. Uh, it was definitely it was definitely hard. There was definitely a switch that had to flip in a lot of churches' mind about the building and that we're not the building, that we can be gathered, um, like, just through the internet. And so I'm honestly very proud of all the churches, I mean, that just went to work immediately and uh, sought after. You know, I think a lot of them immediately thought, like, it's got to be super professional. We need to do it in the sanctuary. And I think as time goes on, we're probably going to see that change in the next uh, couple weeks. So I honestly think it's better for it to be more stripped down. It's okay for it to be from your pastor's house. It's okay to stream um, via Zoom, like have your worship pastor at his house and your pastor at their house, and then y'all switch back and forth, you know, Um, because we've never done this before, right? And so we don't know what it really looks like. But I just think it's so awesome that, um, that we were able to pull off last Sunday, right? Last Sunday was such a big, I think, historic Sunday um for many churches and so this coming sunday is also going to be another big historic because there's a lot of churches that went ahead with having church last sunday right many of them actually saw an increase in people coming which is just wild that doesn't normally happen yeah and so i just i think it's gonna it's encouraging um that the church is is going forth and, and helping people and yeah there's kenny hey kenny hey kenny What's going on, buddy? Um, yeah, I agree with you. Um, and it's it's kind of unprecedented. There was a um, a church of uh, they run two or three thousand people on a weekend uh, here in town. Our our largest Methodist church, and they met uh, on Sunday. Um, obviously, they will not meet um, this coming Sunday. So I think you know just kind of preparing for several weeks up to eight weeks or more of of seeing this. Um, ben, what does that mean for for pastoring? Obviously, we can't be in person with people physically um, in, in a physical location, but we can still minister. And I, I want people to understand that, that our job is, hasn't changed in pastoring our people. Um, how do we go from here as far as pastoring? Yeah, the three words that I've been coaching other pastors with is hope, pivot, and merge. And this is something that we've been telling ourselves here at Christ Fellowship Miami as well. So, so first of all, hope. People are in desperate need of that. You may not Uh, know how you are going to do this, but whatever you need, whatever hope you need to receive from Jesus so that you can give it to others, again, in your congregation and in your community, because you are going to have more eyeballs on you. um, Receive that, fill up your hope tanks so you can give it out to others. So so first of all, hope. Uh, The second thing is pivot. Um, You probably had your plans for your message series for Easter. You may have your, your whole plans for the rest of the year, you're going to have a pivot for that. For for us here at Christ Fellowship, we had we had a plan that for six months a financial campaign uh, for six months. For the last six weeks, we were in a message series leading up to Commitment Weekend. Commitment Weekend was was for us last weekend. We had to cancel that, and we are in a complete pivot in relationship to that. So mm-hmm. we we have our our nice pristine plans in our hands, but we're learning how to pivot and to do that very quickly to be to be nimble enough to respond to this. And then the last thing is merge. So you may be a church that is going to come out of this with a rocky financial situation. If that's the case, be proactive and start looking for other churches where you may need to merge with. And on the flip side, if you're a church that can help bring along other churches into your body of, of churches, and continue the work of God on their campus through under your leadership, think that through. But um, churches need to do that now because if they don't, we're going to find ourselves all up a creek. So I would, I'm, I'm encouraging churches to think that through on both sides of the spectrum. If you're a church that um, helps others merge onto you, or if you may need to be a church to merge, um, we need to be planning for, hoping for the best, but planning for the worst in relationship to the financial realities of a continued downturn in the economy and reduced giving 
because we're not passing physical buckets as well. So those are three things I've been coaching pastors on. So let's talk about online worship experience and kind of best practices. Um, Kenny, do you want to jump in here? What are some ways that we can move forward um, in obviously moving? Obviously, a lot of churches have online worship experience and already set up for that. But maybe the churches that, that aren't ready or that are moving toward that, being forced to, Give us some best practices here. Give us some tips on how to move to online. Yeah, I'm sitting in a church right now that I'm consulting with, and we were talking about literally all the ministry fronts, going through them, and seeing what does it mean to translate what they do in service to online. And um, there's a couple of things I think are uh, high-level takeaways. One is you need to be strategic. It can't be just be opportunistic. Uh, there needs to be some some t- type of coordination and plan. So um, it's all about sequencing and prioritization in my mind. So everything from what platforms are you going to use during this period? Are you going to use Zoom? Are you going to use Skype? Are you going to use Facebook uh, Live? Is it on your page? Is it in your group? Is it on your website? You need to lock those choices down and let all of your staff and team and key volunteers know what those choices are so that you can have consistency during this entire period. They need to know what channel to turn on on their TV in order to connect with your community. So that's the first thing. So just standardizing all that, those technology choices, I think is the first thing. I think the second thing also is trying to figure out what the actual needs are of your audience. Right now, the, the, the gut reaction, I think everyone is, it's all about me, 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 me. I'm the church. I need attendance. I need giving. I need this. And to be honest, the average American doesn't wake up on Sunday thinking about you. Uh, they actually don't, they're not concerned that you haven't been to Bible study in the last two weeks or, or that you haven't attended or anything like that, right? The average, average person is not as frenetic about the loss of church attendance as, as you are. And so the way to do that is at the end of the day, it's all about relationship. And in relationship, it's about being two clicks more generous toward the other person than toward yourself. And so that's what we're doing here. So for instance, we know that a lot of parents are working from home now with our kids here in Jersey. What can we do to serve them? Can we do everything from um, replace that iPad babysitter by producing live content like a TV show every single day that the kids ministry here. So the kids ministry here, they're, they're doing a couple of things. We're, we're going to create a virtual choir for the kids. We're going to actually have an activity that every day we're going to teach them songs and then we're going to get them to record them and submit them. And we're going to create this big virtual choir thing. And that's a great activity that is community based online. Um, we're going to, produce um, uh, one of the guys here is a musician. So he's going to do singing lessons for kids. Um, the, the, the uh, K-Port is the name of the kids program here. They're going to do afternoon tutoring because everyone's going to online education. And so they're lining up every, they have everyone except for, I think a science teacher already already within 24 hours that are actual teachers that are going to get on and do like a help desk for their students and their friends to hop on Facebook live and get some homework help every single day in the afternoon. Um, those are the types of things that are not about church. It's not about Jesus in terms of content But you know what it is? It is about church. It's putting church in the center of the public square and becoming relevant in terms of being a relational necessity for those people. So um, I think Church Online is about worship services and technology. There's so many resources out there. Carl, your team does a great job of doing that kind of support for people. But there's also just the posture of what what we're doing. Um, And then even the Sunday services, I think, needs to change. That was the original question, right? And so I was talking with Brian Buford, right? Their church is, I think, 60-something on the Outreach 100. We were chatting back and forth that the actual Sunday service needs to change online. Um, back at Liquid Church, Ben and I, were, were, were always going back and forth trying to uh, brainstorm. Because we always, I always say, when radio went first to, uh, sorry, when print went to radio, all they did is started reading the newspaper and printed word on the r- mic, and that's it. They didn't know that you could do drama and comedy and westerns, all this stuff, and it changed, right? And then you went from radio to TV, and you just copy-pasted the same thing. They just put a TV with the guys in front of a big, fat microphone with a something, WABC, FM, right, that type of thing. And, they, and that eventually evolved. And television now is going to 
what I see is just Facebook Live, which is a lazy copy and paste. It's a single camera shot on worship and the past and everything. It's not respecting the medium. Yeah. Stephen um, you, Brewer, Brewster, you can you can speak into that completely. We've had nerding out of conversations about that, right? Where that needs to evolve and change. And so the thing that I was talking with Brian Buford, and I'll leave it at this, is what is respecting the medium for the internet? For the church we need to look at other people that are doing that and in other spaces in other spheres i will say one of the thing one of the people that are doing it is jimmy kimmel jimmy kimmel is producing these clips that are really for the internet for the mobile phone it's not for tv in fact he's shooting clips right you, you've seen you've seen those clips where they take bands uh, famous bands and they sing the song but they're using like baby preschool instruments and stuff like that right that stuff doesn't really get aired on the TV show. He's, you have a TV host producing video that's not being shown on TV. How odd is that? His, he's hired as a TV host and he's not producing TV material. He's producing internet material or he's producing segments on TV. You know that segment where like it's um, a blind box and the celebrity has to put their hand in the box and it might touch you the jello or tarantulas or whatever it might be and it's exposed to the, all that kind of stuff. That's for his TV show, but you know what? His writers know that's not for TV. That's a clip that's going to do millions more views on the internet, on Facebook Watch, on Instagram TV, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the types of things that we need, segment-based, show-based, variety show, things that are going to um, bring in interactivity, uh, emotion, interaction. Those are the types of things. It's not sit and soak 75-minute sermons anymore. At least I hope not. So let's talk practical. Uh, obviously, maybe our our messages need to get shorter, or or our worship sets. Uh, Luke McElroy, you want to talk to that? Maybe how how long do our worship sets need to be? Well, I think it's interesting. This, this has been the conversation that I've had in the last forty eight hours uh, since Sunday. I feel like uh, while being as graceful as possible at the church, it's exactly what Kenny just said. The, the session, the service structure has to shift. I mean, there's a reason why in award shows. And really television in general, we don't watch full length concerts. And those are powerhouse celebrities with songs that all of us love seeing with millions and millions of dollars for the production. There's a reason that award shows do one song and then they go to some sort of teaching thing. And so I feel like there's a huge opportunity here to encourage the church to say, hey, when we watch worship, um, that's three and four songs long. First off, it's very rare that we're going to be standing in our family rooms singing alongside that may happen, but I'm just going to tell you, for me personally, I don't. And so it's kind of weird. I'm watching this weird karaoke that I'm not singing along with, and it's three or four songs. Mm -hmm. And I'm being really graceful. I, I'm just encouraging the church to ask the question, how do we pivot? How do we go, hey, maybe it's one song that we really feel like the message of that song speaks to this sermon series. Brewster uh, and his church, when he was at Crosspoint, you guys played around with this. You actually pre-produced worship stuff and then you went away from it because you kind of realized that nobody was really engaging with it. And you started using statistics, if I'm not mistaken, to really drive home. What is it people are engaging with? And I think Kenny, you said this too. We got to reduce our, our time frame. I was talking with a friend the other day, literally Sunday afternoon. I said, Hey, how was church this morning? And they said it was awful. For the first time ever, we didn't have children's ministry. My kids were running around like chickens with their head cut off around the house. And we were trying our hardest to focus on a 45 minute sermon. And I think what we've got to realize as people in the church, encouraging the church, are, is that our audience viewing environment has shifted so much that we're now dealing with text messages, Facebook notifications, and we don't have that live captivity to really capture and keep us hooked. So I think we've got to ask those questions. What do we do with children's? How do we create more devotionals, engagement, small group discussions? I love the ideas Kenny's saying. We've got yeah. to think about it more small hooks. And maybe it's not Sunday service as much as it's here's an idea that we're going to present and we're going to come back together on Wednesday and we're going to present that idea, follow up again and have more conversation. And then we're going to have a Bible study on Thursday or a devotional email or a podcast that goes out on Friday. And it's going to have to be multi medium, just like we consume content online in multiple formats. Bruce, are you going to speak to that? Yeah, I think Luke's onto something for sure. Here's the reality. There's two audiences. Okay. There's the, thousands of people that have all, already been tuning in digitally, whether it's through podcasts or socials or, or on the weekends. And then there's a smaller group that actually shows up at your buildings every week. Um, we are reacting to this group of people that come once every five weeks to our services. 
And every part of our reaction right now is, is around that idea. When the reality is a message is pillar content and it should, it should filtrate into every area of communication that we have. This disruption that we're experiencing right now is only going to escalate the digital trend of ministry. It's not even a trend is a reality, the digital reality of ministry. Mm-hmm. Like things are never going to go back to the way they were. Like right. it's done. So like if we're holding on to like, if we can make it 14 more days or six more weeks, then we're going to go back to like everything just being cool. It's not, it, there is, this is cool. Get ready for it. So mm-hmm. like when you produce worship sets on for the weekend, you're not going to produce a better worship set than Elevation has on their YouTube channel or Hillsong has on their YouTube channel or Vertical has on their, like all of this amazing content that is spirit anointed, filled, amazing is already out there. So think about as creative people, our responsibility is to solve problems. That's what creates, that's the, the core responsibility of creativity. Right now, there's a ton of great problems to solve. And we have to get really, really aggressive in how we're solving those problems. Um, what is the thing that makes your church unique? What is the voice of your church? When I'm speaking to churches around the country about their music and everybody wants to write the next great song, a lot of times it's finding out your voice. And we think finding our voice is a, a melodic thing or a tone or a melody. The reality is it's the mission and the purpose of your church. What's your church known for in your community? That's what you should be talking about online, whether it's on a Sunday service or a Wednesday podcast or whatever. You got to know your thing. And that's what people rally around is that thing. So I think that the, we have to solve the problems of the day of like, how are we going to stream? Are we going to use an iPhone? Are we going to use a million dollar rig? Like we have to solve those problems, but the bigger problem we have to solve is, how do we adjust to this as our new reality normal and and what does it what opportunities are in front of us a lot a lot of really great ones yeah and as long as we don't stick our head in the sand we're gonna we're gonna be more than okay like this is we should always be looking for improvement and adjustments when we're not the world adjusts us and we're just in the middle of an adjustment right now it's like going to the chiropractor all right, let's talk conferences for a second. We'll kind of speed through these um, as we go. Justin, do you want to talk about that CC and what you have planned? I know you're a little bit later in the year, but tell me how this whole disruption has affected conference world. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're seeing conferences uh, cancel or postpone kind of left and right, both in, in the church world and outside the church world. Uh, you know, Eventbrite has basically suspended all payouts to events. I mean, there's some big, big changes going on and everyone's kind of just looking to see what's, what's going to happen. Um, obviously the events that are happening in March, April, May, even June are the most affected. And, uh, we're seeing those just completely cancel. As for, uh, that church conference, you know, we're an event that happens every year in September, and so, you know, at this point, we are uh, just holding steady and uh, we plan to continue to have the conference, um, you know, so long as we're able to, uh, we'll definitely have it. Uh, we always have done a, a live stream uh, online and record the sessions as well. So, you know, for those who, who don't want to come for whatever reason, um, you know, there will be that option as well. But we're we're pushing ahead. Um, you know, we've always... Uh, done things that keep people safe and we want to put people first. And so we understand that and we'll work around that. Um, but at this point, I don't see any reason. Ho- hopefully we'll, we'll be through uh, the worst of this or all of this uh, by then. And uh, you know, it may not be the event that we kind of had hoped for this year. Um, but I think that's just the reality of any kind of event right now. We, you know, we're, we're pivoting a little bit, but um, at this point, I don't, I don't see a need for a major change. Salt, what about, I mean, uh, Luke, what about Salt? Yeah, I mean, we're kind of in the same boat. I think it's, um, <clears throat> I think a, a week ago or two weeks ago, we put out an email that basically told our community, hey, if you purchase a ticket to Salt 2020 and you don't 
uh, you aren't able to make it, we're going to let you for the first time ever transfer that to a future event free of charge, whether that has anything to do with coronavirus, a schedule change, a financial issue in the church, you just can't travel or whatever. We wanted to pr provide every sort of opportunity for you to uh, be flexible. But I think, you know, I, I sort of echo what Justin just said. I think the honest truth is it's, it's just too far out. I mean, we're in mm -hmm. October. And um, we just feel like uh, our team is starting to put in place some other ideas to still be able to equip the church to still get in front of uh, this community, because I think come October, we're going to be really desperate to connect um, in some way, because I think we will have been isolated. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably too early to really tell, but we're still sort of forging forward. Um, my heart really does break for a lot of those um, events. I mean, Justin Dean talked about this uh, Jeff Henderson's four conference had to cancel just because of the timing um, catalyst can canceled from West coast. Uh, and so there's a lot of shifting that's happening in the church realm, but what a great chance also as a church to say, Hey, we're going to take this time where we're not doing regular meetings every single day or every week, regular services. You may not have as many tasks to prepare for the actual live gathering. This could be a great chance for you and your team to kind of hunker down and go, Hey, what are new tools? What are new processes? What are new strategies we can grow in? What are new angles and things we can sort of try and, I mean, there's, there's a, there's always been a tendency that when a recession happens, university enrollment increases. Um, and that's a long-term uh, shift that's happened over time. And I'm just like, man, what, what a great opportunity for us while we're socially distancing ourselves to make sure that we're knowledgeably increasing ourselves. And we're also staying connected friends. Even this right here is cool because to use a phrase Louis Giglio said, just because we're socially distancing ourselves doesn't mean we have to spiritually distance ourselves. Yeah, right. And I think that there's a lot of truth in that statement. So I want to move, just for the sake of time, I want to move to some of the resources and training that some of our ministries are providing and, and others. Um, uh, Luke Miller, why don't you talk to Worship House, what you guys are seeing, and maybe some media content and resources that you guys are, are uh, providing for the church. Yeah, well, it's, it's really interesting just to echo some stuff that some of the others have said. I mean, we, we went from a week ago today, if you would have talked to churches about streaming their services, they would have said, ah, that's something we're thinking about doing down the road. Maybe we've got a committee that's looking into that. Um, or you would have people have been like, absolutely not. We will never stream our services. We believe in getting together for the gospel. You know what I mean? Like you'd have had, um, and, uh, and then today, every church in America is going to be streaming on Sunday. I mean, that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration, but not much. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the world has changed. And we kind of have absorbed that over the weekend and the first part of this week of uh, between Worship House Media and Worship House Kids, the thousands of churches that we serve are all saying, like, what do we do now? Um, and the shorthand way that I always described what we do at Worship House Media is we provide video content for your screens. Um, so what goes on at the front of your church is, is the content that we provide. And that's kind of the quick shorthand way of doing it. And all of a sudden now, those screens are going to be blank on, on Sunday morning in an empty building. Um, and so we're kind of having to pivot to that. And so one of the things we've dabbled in over the years is the idea of adding a web license, a, a streaming license for the content. And we work with about 400 independent producers um, who have told us how we can and can't sell their content. So that's kind of moving something uphill a little bit, but uh, I've been on the phone for the last two days talking to producers. And one of the things that's been really cool is that every church that we've talked to, every media producer that we've talked to have all said overwhelmingly the exact same thing, which is like, we want to do whatever we can do to help advance the gospel. Um, so whatever we need to do to change our licensing, whatever we need to do to change the way this stuff is delivered, um, like don't, basically the response I've gotten from our media producers is like, you don't even have to ask, like, let's just get this thing done. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really cool. So we've actually transitioned about 75% of our media content now. We've gotten approval um, that that's going to be able to be available to stream and use without any kind of uh, restrictions. So that's really cool that people who are used to using mini movies and uh, that sort of thing, they can continue to do that. All of our background content, our stills, our motion backgrounds, our countdowns, all of that stuff can be used without any kind of problem. Um, worship tracks are a little tricky. That's the big thing I've been working through today. And, and Luke Miller, if I can interject, that streaming license, uh, is that going to have an added cost or is that just part of what are you guys kind of trying to work with producers to modify your current license? Yeah, right now it's going to be for free. We, we did have a few products before that had like an additional cost to do a streaming license and we're just waiving that. Uh, we just want churches to be able to use it. And, uh, for the people who are figuring out what the stream that they're going to put together is going to look like, we would love for them to be able to, to use our, our content in those. 
Yeah, and I know. it's a great way to, when I was talking earlier about shortening that worship set, uh, I think you guys have a plethora of incredible resources that could help the church tell creative stories, angles, and, and visual form, especially what Kenny was talking about with what like Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, you know, all those guys are doing with these little segments. You guys have those already made. And I think there's a great opportunity uh, to be able to start to slowly put those into this place to basically figure out how do we how do we create a more, you know, varied experience online on Sundays? Yeah. So Luke Miller, you and I were talking yesterday on the phone or a couple of days ago about, uh, cause we produce uh, ready-made content that that's on worship house. And we also produce uh, custom media. And I think that I, I just want to encourage producers during this time. And I think most of them are, are in that space of man, the landscape is changing don't worry about additional licensing. Like we, we've never had that. We, we know that church is online anyway. So to, to, there's a balance between nickel and diming or, or, you know, money grab and being completely silent. You know, the, we're all trying to kind of balance that. Um, but you've, you've had some, some good response from producers and stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, like I said, 75% of the mini movie content that we have has been covered now that all that stuff is going to be available. You'll see a little flag that says what the streaming license is and isn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're going to have literally tens of thousands of videos that will be able to be streamed um, this Sunday. Good. Uh, Justin, in way of training, I know that you produced a uh, great, and we all have some you know blog posts, articles, resources like that coming out. Uh, but Justin, I noticed an article that you released with just tons of resources you want to talk up through some of those yeah sure we we put that out on uh, sunday mag sunday mag.tv we have a number of uh, different articles and we're we're producing a live streaming kit and things like that now and uh really just trying to provide the church as, as much as we can during this time we're, we're linking to other people's resources as well there there's a number of uh companies and services who have created you know free graphics uh just to get us through these you know first few weeks as we're making a lot of announcements about uh, coronavirus. And so we've got links to all that there, but really our, our big focus has been on trying to get the church to just wrap their head around this idea that, you know, it, it has nothing really to do with Sunday service anymore and, and your sermon. Um, there's all this panic to, oh my gosh, how do we get, you know, our Sunday sermon out? If we don't do that, then everything's just going to crash and burn. And uh, we're trying to get them in general to just completely pivot and go towards what we've been saying all along, uh, even at the conference, uh, you know, that we do, um, everything is geared around towards Sunday to Sunday. Uh, we, we provide a lot of resources for Sunday morning as well, but uh, we put a lot of emphasis on uh, Sunday to Sunday throughout the week, creating disciples, building relationships, meeting people's needs throughout the week. I love the ideas everyone's thrown out so far about um, just putting out different content throughout the week that really has nothing to do with the Sunday sermon. And so that's where a lot of our resources are, are focused, trying to get people to, um, to come up with new ideas for that. It's all new territory, right? So at this point, it's, uh, we're throwing out ideas, we're uh, brainstorming, we're collaborating together, we're using what we've, what we've had before. But now that there's, you know, I think even as, as we come out of this, you know, eight, eight 12 weeks from now, uh, I'm hoping actually that there will be still less emphasis uh, on Sunday morning and, and come to us and, and watch a sermon. Um, you know, obviously preaching the gospel is our, our commandment and that should be at the heart of everything that we do. Uh, but no one ever said it had to be in a big building uh, where everyone gathers. And right. So uh, right. hopefully, you know, this, the stuff we're putting out is, is helping with that. So a couple more questions as we kind of wrap today. Uh, Luke, tell me about Assault U. You have some, obviously we all have resources and training and, and I want to encourage us, and this is partly the reason for this roundtable, is a lot of people uh, see our different ministries and see, oh, they're competitive with that person and, and that. Um, and honestly, we're all, we're all friends. We're all trying to resource the church. And so I think that's a that's an incredible thing. And, and I'm honored to, to be friends with, with you guys. And we're all just trying to, to serve the church in general. So um, I'm really proud of that. So um, Luke, tell me about Salt U a little bit and some of the resources that you guys are providing there. 
Yeah, so Salt University has always been <clears throat> this online library of all the workshops, keynotes, uh, panel discussions that we've had at Salt Conference for the seven years that we've done Salt. Uh, we've recorded all of them on video. Uh, many of the guys on this uh, broadcast have uh, been in one of those over one of those years. And we decided here's a great opportunity for churches to try and get ahead. So we just said, hey, for 14 bucks, you get your first 14 days. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to just put as many resources into that. The other cool part about uh, Salt University that may help churches is that with this whole being socially distanced, how do you train volunteers? Um, and you may not have the same training needs. And one of the things that we rolled out at conference last year um, was this whole online custom training course. And so you can add 50 team members for that $14 in the first 14 days. Um, and those team members will all have access to every single class, but you could create a customized training course. So maybe it's something you guys are putting out right now. Of how do we get ahead of this? Maybe it's questions. Maybe it's uh, your own tech team that doesn't serve as much on Sunday anymore, or maybe it's your parking lot team. I don't know. You're wanting to keep them in community. You're wanting to keep them together because now we don't have that physical presence to sort of keep people bonded. Right. Maybe it's questions. Maybe it's YouTube videos. You can upload your own stuff. You can use anything um, in our uh, library as well. So um, I think that's a, a great opportunity. Uh, you can check that out, saltuniversity.com. And there's a free resource there too. There's like 21 free videos. So even if that, I mean, even if money is, we're wanting to be careful about that, try the free thing out for the time being. So Ben, tell me about some of the, uh, you guys opened your broadcast campus during the week, right? Tell me about that. Yeah. So you talk about resources, which is great, uh, incredible, um, you know, organizations here represented in terms of how they can resource. Uh, one of the things that we did as a, as a local church, because we have a broadcast campus, is we told to the local churches in our area, if you wanted to come here uh, and record your message, we'd love to host that. So in other words, you, uh, you might just be able to do the phone and that works for you. Uh, if you want to step up the quality um, for your congregation, Monday through Friday, good, nine to five, um, our staff and our facilities will be available for you for the foreseeable future. So that's, that's an, um, an open invitation to our local pastors and churches to utilize this as a resource. So we're, how do we, so, um, we are just a local church, but how can we equip and empower other local churches? We're, we're trying to think that through and coach other churches to think that through as well, because we all have something to, to give to the larger kingdom. What is that? How can we contribute that? That's a fantastic uh, resource, Ben. And uh, I, yeah, very. Um, uh, that's an encouragement to larger churches who have the capability to do that, to open that up uh, for other churches to, um, to jump in on. Uh, and you were saying that most of those are already booked, right? Yeah, we're, we're filling up. We've got slots already for next week, which is, and, and we're telling, hey, beyond, beyond your regular message uh, for your students or for your kids, feel free to utilize that. So, um, and you've been talking about resources. If people are looking about how to do a kid's experience or a student's experience, by no means have we cracked the nut. But if they're looking for an example, they can go to cfmiami.org slash kids or slash students and see how we we threw that together this past weekend. By no means is it, uh, is it excellent, um, but it was engaging. It was helpful for our students and our kids this past weekend. Well, Kenny, as we wrap today, kind of give us going into where, where we're going. What, what is next? We've talked a little bit about that, but what, when does the uh, light at the end of the tunnel come? Obviously, this is the, the new norm. You know, I was, I, so I was with a staff here um, in Jersey, and one of the things that uh, I – frame the conversation today was um, nerding out a little bit. So, you know, in, in geometry, if you remember on a graph, there's a curve. And, and what they say is when the curve changes this nature and shape and personality of the curve, it's called an inflection point. And your community out there right now is filled with anxiety, confusion, um, lack of hope, etc. And right now, the ability for us as church leaders, as friends and neighbors, is to become that inflection point from despair and confusion into real hope, peace, and fellowship. And I think that really, I think, is, a, is an eye-opening experience because we're always down in the weeds as practitioners, right? Like, how do, what's the best live stream, the chat and email and conversion rate and this and that? Right. I think we have to keep the perspective in place. And I think that the opportunity is not waiting eight weeks from now, 12 weeks from now. This is the opportunity that we can start to become the hope and the friend 
and the trusted neighbor of everyone out there, right? It, it, when you're down and out, you really know who your friends are. And right now, there are people on your street, your neighbors, your, your councilman, your mayor, your principal, your, your peer church pastors. Everyone is a little bit down and out. And so I think this is the opportunity to show them what true friendship is. Um, and this, I mean, I love the fact that, you know, we are here brainstorming together and trying to be, um, positive. And I think we just need to continue that posture. And so I think that's for church, church online, digital, social, et cetera. That's what we need to do. We need to stay positive and really be that face so that everyone could, everyone's drawn to a smile. Yeah. And so let's lead our, our communities that way. Ben, as we pastor people and as we lead in the pastoring, would you mind praying for the church as a whole, as, our, as us as leaders, uh, as our community, and, and just, uh, just pray for our churches? Yeah, I'm going to do that with my eyes open because it's always weird to watch someone pray for <laughs> prolonged periods of time with their eyes closed. <laughs> right. uh, but, but I do this, I pray. And I uh, got to think of that scene in which you're just, when you're leaving your disciples and they were with you for three years and you, you, you said you're bouncing, you went up to heaven. And I can imagine how freaked out they were at that time um, because that's all they knew. That's all they knew. Uh, and we are a little, the church, to be honest, the church right now is a little bit in freak out mode. Because for the past 300 years, this is all we've known. And, but, but I take heart. We take heart. Because the same words you shared with your disciples is the same words you share with us right now. And it's, um, I'm with you. Take heart. I am with you. Um, and we take heart knowing that you are with us. And we're not going to freak out. Or we're going to reduce that freak out factor. Um, and we're going to continue to be the church that you've called us to be. We thank you for those words of encouragement. Uh, may we take heart. Amen. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate your time and uh, thank you for how you're leading the church. The show notes for this episode are available now at makingsundayhappen.com. Well, hey guys, as I leave you this week, I want to give you a free resource. Our team has put together an ebook called The Ultimate Livestream Guide. Steve Dirks from our team has curated a massive collection of resources and also gives you a step by step guide to setting up your church's live stream. He walks you through things to think through before you start streaming, how to use Facebook Live, how to go live on your church's website, the best streaming providers to connect with, and more. It's an incredible resource for your church to help you navigate how to live stream your services effectively. You can go to 1230.media forward slash live stream guide. That's 1230.media forward slash live stream guide to pick up your copy. It's absolutely free. Okay. 1230.media forward slash live stream guide. All right. Be on the lookout for more bonus episodes of the podcast this week. We're talking with my friend James Wassum to help walk through some audio tips for your live stream. I'm also talking with Nate Anderson from Living as One about how to set up your live stream from scratch. That's all on the way this week. Bonus episodes this week on the podcast. They'll be right in your feed. Uh, we'll put them on Facebook. We'll put them on YouTube so you can check us out um, in any of the places that you consume the podcast. We want to help you navigate through this time and make Sunday happen for your church. All right, continue to create incredible worship experiences for your church this week, no matter where you are. I'll catch you next time. Making Sunday Happen is a production of the Ministry of 1230 Media. For show notes, archive episodes, and more free resources for your church, visit makingsundayhappen.com.